Okay, well, I, I hope everybody's been able to join. Um, welcome to the Baselight Learning Programme. My name's Bob Chorley, and I'm joined here today with other members of our training team. Uh, this is the first session of our free online training course. And uh, today, Andy will cover some of the basics and explain how the Baselight user interface works. Uh, each week, one of our team will cover a different subject. So by the end of the course, you will have covered all the core features of Baselight. We're recording each session and we'll upload them as video tutorials to our website. So anyone will be able to access them free of charge in the future. Now, if you're watching this live and would like to make any comments, or if you wanna ask any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat and we'll try and cover them either during the session or at the end of the session. Um, but if we don't have time, uh, we'll cover them in future sessions. Anyway, now I'll hand over to Andy and um, he can take you through today's tutorial. All right, thank you, Bob. And also welcome everyone to that um, to our first session in that Baselight uh, learning program. And to not waste anybody's time, I will um, start sharing my screen. The first thing I want to talk about is Baselight Look. So maybe we, you already um, noticed that we um, have introduced a new software recently called Baselight Look. And so what is this? And uh, the, the explanation is pretty short. It's very similar to Baselight Student and it's our continuation of the Baselight Student program. But we thought what Baselight Student is really lacking is a capability for creatives to author looks and to share looks um, with a software that is easily accessible to many people, uh, for example, BPs. That's why we added to Baselight Student the um, functionality of a basic import and export of BLGs. Um, just as a disclaimer, these BLGs will not contain metadata from the original source files, so, they are, so you will not be able to multi-paste these kind of BLGs onto a big system. So it's more intended to author um, a series of looks that you can then share on a project, for example, between different uh, departments. And the other uh, changes to um, the last Baselight student build is that we now have, um, as with the full Baselight, we have native Apple M1 architecture support. And we also reduced um, that 90 day license limit from the software. So it, um, the software still uses a license, but the license is free and the license will also automatically renew itself as long as the machine is connected to the internet. So it should make it much more accessible and easier to use for you. And how do you access or how do you get access to Baselight Look? We will release it uh, very soon, probably um, uh, until tomorrow on our website and there go to the training section and then you will be a, and then, then you will see the base like look area there and then you need to um, fill a form for us and you are ready to go. But if you currently have base light student running, that's also totally fine. So you're not missing anything if you're using a base light student. Um, okay. Now to the Baselight Learning Program. Um, Bob already introduced the, the whole thing. So this is our free course here. So the idea is that we start with, the, uh, with no requirement of any prior knowledge in that course. So it's really aimed towards beginners. So if you're an advanced Baselight user, then it might, so the first courses or, or classes might not be so interesting for you. But yeah, as we progress, uh, through the content, we hopefully uh, every, everyone has some nice pieces that they can learn from it. Yeah, we yeah we encourage you to use our open chat in these uh, webinars and ask questions. It, it will make sense to focus your questions on the topic that is covered in in each session, so that we keep the um, the content in a nice organized way. Another thing about that uh, Baselight Learning Program is that we have a module naming scheme. So each class that we're doing belongs to a module. And it is a, yeah, it is a proven naming scheme in the industry. I, I just want to quickly explain it. It, uh, that it consists, each module has a number that consists of four digits. The first digit is the uh, level of that um, module. So starting at essential, which is the zero, and then going higher and higher up to three, which is expert. The second digit 
is what we call the domain uh, of the content. So one is productivity, two creativity, three interoperation, four foundation, and five technical. And the last two digits are then just a number within e each of these uh, 20 uh, combinations of first digits. And here are some examples. Um, so uh, so the today's uh, module that I will cover will be 0101, which is the UI introduction. So that's a very, so you can see it's from the essential level and it's in the productivity domain and it's the first module in that um, 01 uh, group. And other examples are here, for example, uh, 2404, which would mean intermediate foundation and the fourth module that's uh, about scopes. And what this numbering scheme allows us then in the future will be to create also playlists through our content. Maybe someone is not really interested in the color tools, but more in conform and assist tools, then we can generate then hopefully a um, optimized playlist for them. And other people are maybe focused more on getting really started up with the color tools. And so then we can also focus on that. Okay, so I think now it's time to start with the first module. Let's uh, leave the full screen mode. So I'm already inside Baselight look here. Today, we will not cover how we create our first uh, scene and job in uh, Baselight. So that will be for the next session. So today, the topic is a quick and very basic introduction into the Baselight UI. And so I will first start with uh, showing or labeling the, in the individual components of the UI. So the most important one, and for that, maybe I jump into uh, a real base light scene where uh, actually where I graded uh, actual footage and where, you, where everything looks a little bit more practical. So the most important uh, element is probably here, the, what we call the display, with, where we see the actual image that we're working on. On a big base light machine, or if you have a separate uh, video output, for example, with an uh, SDI output card from, um, from AJA or Blackmagic Design, then that image can be on a dedicated output monitor, but you don't need an SDI output card to do that on a Mac. You can also just connect a second display via the graphics card and then use that as a full screen video output. But in these webinars to keep everything nice and tight in one uh, video and uh, maybe and if you're using it yourself on a laptop, then this is how it will look in the beginning. And then on the bottom right here is what uh, is called the timeline. So this is where we see uh, the order of the cut of uh, our project and uh, we see also the, the, the layers and operators that are added to each shot and that make up the grade of each shot. Above the timeline, we have what we call the cuts view. So this is a, like a small storyboard of the timeline where every cut uh, or where every shot of the timeline has one small uh, thumbnail and some optional additional metadata. And it's a very useful tool to um, do then copy pasting of grades, for example. Here in the corner bottom left, we have the cursors window. And cursors are a very important concept in Baselight because there can be multiple cursors within each uh, timeline. So a cursor here is, uh, is the playhead that I can move through the timeline and it can have a lot of properties. Um, for example, a format, a, a viewing color space and many other uh, properties that we will also discuss in the later module. So for today to get everyone started, uh, we might have a quick look at the viewing color space. So if you're using Baselight look on a computer with the computer display, then it might make sense to set the viewing color space to either sRGB display, 2.2 gamma slash rec 709. So if you're using a standard sRGB display, but, but if you're using an Apple uh, MacBook laptop, for example, with a, a display P3 display, then it would be more suitable to set the viewing color space to Apple 2.2 gamma uh, forward slash P3D65. This will then correctly map the color gamut for that specific display. Here for that recording, I will switch my one back to sRGB display. 
And another note, you can set the default viewing color space for a setup. I don't want to go into too much detail, but just to get you started, because it will also ask you about the setups when you start the software. It actually doesn't, if you're working on a computer without a video output, uh, without dedicated video output, then you can just use any kind of setup. And then you can go in here and set the viewing color space like that. This is the default viewing color space for that specific setup then here, for example, to your preferred one. If you have a dedicated video output, this is, uh, this point here is where you set that up. So far, so good. Then here above the cursor, we have the playback controls. So I guess this is pretty self-explaining. We have play, uh, jump to next shot, and some loop controls, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then in the top left corner, we have, we have what we call the parameters view, which is a very important view. So this is where the actual work in a timeline is, uh, is performed by the operators. For example, colorists and color assistants. So here we can see that the parameters uh, view is changing based on the context. So here, if I'm selecting different grading operators, we can see there are then the different operators visible in the timeline. And, and so what, what, what can we do in um, inside base light? So there can be a, a lot of different um, uh, effects. So let's uh, see a bypass, for example, of that shot here. So that's uh, so here's where I added a, a grade. And what do, do I have here? So a, a lot of um, primary operators here in the beginning. But then we obviously in baselight you can also add keys to shots. And in this case here, I, I for example, I gave that a red color, a more intense, uh, darker tone. And but there can also be. Um, let's find something with the shape, but they can also be, for example, track shapes. This is something that I added here to um, uh, get a little bit more focus on the piano in the center or even other operations like on this one here, for example, I straightened um, a distortion of the anamorphic lens that, that was used on that shot. So just to show a few examples and you can see then here, um, depending on the tool that I selected, we will see a different context here in the parameters view. So what I haven't explained yet is this area here. And so here we currently have our histogram at the bottom. So this is a part of our, the base light scopes. And one important thing to note about the UI is that everything is customizable. So we can touch, you can touch basically all the divider lines between certain um, areas and then uh, readjust the UI. And you can even uh, remove and add elements to the UI of uh, base light. So, uh, and so now let's try that as an example. So let's say we want to get rid of that histogram area here. How do we uh, do achieve that? We hold down on the Mac the control key, and then we do a right click on that area. And just remember the control key is the magic key to do all the UI adjustments. Uh, right click, now hide histogram. Now we are left here with the base light gallery, which is also a very important and handy tool, but we are not talking about it today. So I will also get rid of that one. So I hold it down again, the control key, and then do hide gallery. So now we got rid of these two elements. So how do we insert a new element? So let's say we want to insert um, an RGB parade at the same position or a Luma uh, waveform. We, I do hold down control again, right click insert. And now here in the scope session uh, section, we can use a Luma waveform, for example, and then adjust that. And this also works across multiple displays. And once you're happy with the layout of the, of the UI, you can go into views and then workspaces. Here, here you can see at the bottom, all the different uh, workspaces. There's the standard one that we started with today. And now we have one that is labeled workspace one because we started to modify the standard workspace. If we go into views, manage workspaces, I can now label that as, for example, BLP for baseline learning program. And, and I have that now quickly accessible 
um, in my workspaces. Uh, also, please note that here in the drop down menus, you can always see the keyboard shortcuts to access a certain function. So, in order to access, um, also to jump back to our standard workspace, we can um, press Control, Shift, and One. So, I will try that. And you can see now we jump back to our standard workspace. So, that's a nice uh, way to. Um, to jump between different workspaces. And also, it's a nice way to learn the keyboard shortcuts because every time you're using the drop down menu, you will be reminded of the keyboard shortcut to access this. Other keyboard shortcuts can be found in the help menu. And there you can, um, there you have a dedicated PDF for keyboard shortcuts where you can also do a quick uh, command F in to find a specific uh, term. So I also highly recommend. Um, having a look at that if you're looking for keyboard shortcuts. So one of the last things that I want to show today is, um, or that to teach you today is uh, how to pan and zoom inside Baselight. And so that gesture works with um, holding down uh, middle mouse and drag to pan, and then command middle mouse on Mac and drag to zoom. So let's jump back to our um, larger timeline here. So what do I mean? So now here I'm with my mouse cursor over the um, display, over the image. I'm just now uh, pressing the middle mouse. Um, so I'm personally, I'm using a, a Wacom pan and I'm pressing the bottom button. And now I can pan around in the image, but the same is true here for the timeline, for example. And also it is true inside, um, inside operators. So if I jump to this shot and I go to D key, you can see that here uh, with the same gesture, I can move around that 3D cube here. So it's a gesture that uh, appears everywhere inside Baselight. And the second gesture is if we hold down command additionally, then we can zoom into the image or zoom out. And in the timeline, we have the same, and there it's, um, it's separated for X and Y direction. So if I, hold down command, hold down middle button, and then drag left and right. I do an uh, X zoom, uh, uh, zoom on the X axis. And if the first movement that I start with is in the Y direction, I do a Y direction uh, zoom. So this is something that you should really get familiar with very early to enjoy the software the best. So, so now I moved around my image here in the output. So maybe I show um, something else. And then in that run, I can go quickly over the meanings of the different uh, drop down menus there at the top. So there is a feature to reset the view of my display, and it's called Home Zoom. And that feature you can find in the display drop down menu. Here we can see Home Zoom. The keyboard shortcut is F12. So that resets my view. And so what we just learned is that the display dropdown menu, this menu here manages everything that considers the display output. So basically our video output, everything that is happening in this one is managed in the display uh, dropdown menu. So here we can also show a transform alarm overlay, for example, um, and we'll build uh, split screens, et cetera, et cetera. The views menu, is managing everything that considers the UI. So if you're on a machine where the video output is on a dedicated display, then it's even clearer. The views manages everything that is happening on the UI displays. Display manages everything that happens inside the display output. Help menu should be pretty self-explaining. The cursors and layer, um, I guess, as well. In the insert menu, you can find all the operators that, uh, that can be found inside Baselight and operators are the actual tools that we can uh, apply to the image for image processing. Uh, marks, navigate and select are again, uh, probably pretty um, self-explaining edit as well. And so the last two are scene and Baselight. Scene is very similar to, uh, let's say the file menu in other software that you might know. So a Baselight scene, is the actual uh, project or the actual timeline that we are opening. So we can open scenes here, we can save them and we can close them, 
etc. Also here on the bottom, you, we can see the recently opened scenes on that machine. And last but not least, the base light menu is more a general menu. So here on about base light, we can see the version that we're currently using. And of course, we can exit the, the software. And we have a, a couple of other options here. For example, I showed you the setups before, preferences, formats, and all of them should be covered in uh, future sessions. So now I would hand over uh, to Bob and see if we have any questions from the audience that we might want to answer now. Hi, yes, thanks, Andy. Um, just get my video working again. Um, so there were a couple of things which came up that um, hopefully uh, you can cover now. Um, the first one um, was a question about the workspaces. Um, is this a special workspace that you've got here? Uh, because it looks different from one of the ones which somebody had uh, when they started up Baselight on their machine. Um, so I explained that uh, workspaces can be customized and maybe they started with one of the default, uh, the different default settings. So maybe you can just now briefly go through the customization of workspaces. Yeah, so, so, so I already showed um, uh, a, a little bit before. And uh, also one important thing to note is that workspaces are also managed per monitor configuration. So if you're starting the software with multiple monitors connected, you will then have a, a different, um, so then, then the workspaces are managed differently from when you're starting with one monitor and a certain resolution. So workspaces are always stored per resolution and per monitor um, layout. And yeah, I mean, we, we all, uh, yeah, before we already created the BLP uh, workspace, but if I want to um, customize that further and for example, say I don't need the playback controls, so then we can unlock, um, we can um, hide these ones, but we want to insert, for example, or let's, um, yeah, let's insert here. We need some more uh, metadata about files somewhere, then we can insert the, the big metadata thing here, where we can here, for example, now show um, the, the shot uh, time code or um, uh, something, uh, or like the rec, record time code, etc. And this is then here now stored in the um, BLP workspace. If I want to create a completely new workspace, for example, you can see that there is one called Andy Grade and also one that's called Scopes. Then you can go in the, to Manage Workspaces, duplicate the existing one by uh, pressing new. And then let's say uh, we call that Andy Meta Data. And now we have this one as avail uh, available as well. And as, uh, and as I explained before, uh, all of them are accessible via keyboard shortcuts. And you can here with up and down keys, you can rearrange them so that you have your most important 10 ones quickly accessible via the keyboard shortcuts. So I hope that um, helps. Yeah, yes, thanks, Andy. The, the other questions um, were uh, specifically related to working with the laptop. Um, if, you've, if you've only got the touchpad on a laptop, how do you do a middle mouse click? Um, now, Sam has answered that in the chat, um, but just so that it's actually captured on the recording, um, we'll just mention that that's actually, uh, sorry, command alt and click, we'll do the middle mouse click on a Mac. Um, having said that, we do really highly recommend that you get a three button mouse um, for using base light. How, however you're using base light, the three button mouse, or if you prefer to use a tablet, um, a pen, a standard Wacom pen will work just as well. Um, another question was- Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, actually a very good question. Yeah. yeah, I forgot to add that to my slide because um, yeah, that's important yeah. to know that it's command option um, drag. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the final question, uh, which also Sam has just answered, is if you have um, a separate monitor for the image, um, then how do you move the mouse cursor between the UI monitor and the image display? Um, and because uh, sometimes people do it by accident. Uh, one method is to move the pointer quickly towards the corner of your screen, and it will flip over to the other monitor. But that's um, that gesture um, is a little bit random. It depends on quite a lot of settings inside the machine. So a quicker way of doing it is to use the keyboard shortcut 
uh, which is control, uh, sorry, command and escape on the Mac or control and escape if you're on a full base light machine. And that will toggle the mouse between the two, between the UI monitor and the image display. Um, yeah, this is another essential gesture. If, if you're working with a dedicated yeah, video output. Yeah, very, very good question indeed. And, uh, and, and if you're sitting on a big iron base light uh, and a, that has a blackboard or other control surface connected, there's a dedicated button for it called UI image, very close to, uh, to the center, or at least on the blackboards, it's close to the Wacom tablet. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I can't see any other, any other questions in the chat that we need to answer today. Um, we're just about on the half hour mark. Um, so I think, uh, I think that will conclude today's tutorial. Um, thanks very much, Andy, for going through that. Um, if, if you'd like to know more about training in general, not just this free course, uh, then there is a form that you can fill in to get more information. Uh, please feel free to fill that in or contact us about any other questions you might have about training or about base light or daylight in general. So thanks again for everybody for joining. and. Um, We'll see you next week. Yeah. Yeah. See you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye bye. Bye.